The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm sharing with you the C64. This is the North American release. I purchased this off Amazon, and I'm super excited to finally have this in my possession. I've been wanting this for over a year. The supply is super limited on this. So in today's video, I'm gonna be unboxing this and sharing with you my initial thoughts. I'm gonna be sharing some games, some homebrew games running on it. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the North American packaging. I waited so long to get this. I am very excited about the VIC-20 support, which the C64 uh, full-sized unit has support for. So playing VIC-20 games is important to me. Uh, I'm gonna show in a later video how to properly install VIC-20 games to this. And so this is the North American box here. It is compared to the C64 mini box. Let's open this up. And inside the packaging, it's got kind of like a cover for the actual unit. That's kind of cool. I was really curious to see how close the C64 was to the original. And it's pretty close, a little different. Uh, some people have talked about kind of the plastic being a little less quality, but pretty close. Four USB ports, you can add lots of different things to this. Uh, there's more information about that on their website. Fully functional keyboard, and that's a, that's a big deal. That's what makes this full-sized uh, computer such a big deal for hobbyists and enthusiasts. Here is the updated uh, joystick that has micro switches. And so this is improved from the C64 Mini. Uh, joystick that they included and so this is what you use to control games and multiple functions on the c64 you can use additional peripherals and controllers as well and so the additional things included opening this up you have an hdmi cable nice to see that as well as usb power brick and cable and it's really nice everything's included to hook this up here is the quick guide. There's an extended guide on their website talking about additional functions and things, as well as there's a Facebook group, as well as other hobbyist groups out there that can really help you with you know, understanding the potential to unlock. Here is this compared to the C64 Mini. The C64 Mini is an alternative for people that just want to check out some C64 games. It is a lot more affordable. Here it is compared to a Commodore 64 original. The color is pretty close. They did a good job of getting it pretty close to the original. Not exact, but I think they did a good job. That There was a lot of passion making this product. Here's the backside. As you can see, pretty close, some less uh, less vents as it doesn't need it. Here is the controller of the C64 Mini compared to the full size one. The, the updated one is on the left. Here we go, jumping right in to the startup. You can choose your language and you can choose uh, the speed. And so I'm gonna choose 60 Hertz because this is North American. And so you're gonna have options there you can choose a carousel or a, a, a basic. You can choose screen size, aspect ratio, if you want uh, scan lines or not. There's lots of different options here. And so really it's customized to how you want to run it. Uh, right here, here's some additional options. And again, their website goes into detail more with an expanded instruction manual on what all these can do. And so, this is where you update the firmware. I do recommend updating the firmware when you get this as it adds additional games as well as VIC-20 support. And so here are the games and I'm gonna go kind of briefly through these, just showing you the, the games that are included. There's 64 games included on the computer, California games, Chips Challenge. I mean, there's, there's many, many people are gonna remember here as well as some homebrew stuff here, aftermarket games. And so, what is your favorite? Cyber Dean Warrior, I've always wanted to check that out. Uh, Cybernoid 1 and 2, Deflector, 
so many classics. You know, there's there's uh, over 10,000 games on the Commodore 64. This is just a small sample, but you it's easy to add additional games to this. I'm going to show a couple. Grid Runner, a VIC-20 classic. Really excited about checking that out. But I was flipping through these games here, and there's several that I remember playing back in the day. Impossible Mission 1 and 2. And so there's some shooters on here. Jumpman and Jumpman 2. I remember Jumpman 2 as Jumpman Jr., one of my favorites. And so really excited to see it on here as well. And so going through the list here, lots of classics here. If you're a fan of Commodore 64, I don't think you're going to be disappointed whatsoever. And if you don't see the game that you remember growing up with, you, you can add games to this pretty easily. And so, yes, there's many, many... Uh, of the of the all-time favorites on this included speedball speedball 2 i know a lot of people are fans of that series got kind of a sports series i'm not familiar with and so summer games definitely summer games 2 i mean but yeah ton to enjoy here there is save states and uh there's lots of different ways of playing games and lots of different modes and so I'm uh, really excited to see the selection of games. It's, it's varied. There's lots of different types of games. What is your favorite? Do you have any memories of playing these games? I'd love to hear your stories. Winter games and world games. Oh, definitely played those back in the day. All right, here's Boulder Dash. I know a lot of people remember playing this, and this is how it looks and plays on the C64. And so uh, Boulder Dash is, is, was released on nearly everything and the C64 version is awesome, and so just a just a you know a classic computer game that many grew up and played. Uh, this is one that definitely I know several people remember playing. I definitely want to go back and play this more. Jumpman Junior. Holy cow! Huge fan of Jumpman Junior. I love playing this. Uh, you know, I recently was playing it on the ColecoVision, but the C64 version is amazing. And so the Jumpman Jr. or Jumpman 2, as it's called on the C64, there's 12 different levels, and each level has a theme. Very challenging. You can select the speed and the difficulty of this. It has you know lots of different settings. So Grid Runner here, one of the VIC-20 classics that looks and plays great. I can't wait to check out other VIC-20 games as, you know, uh, you know going back... The whole reason why I got the full-size C64 was because of the VIC-20 support. But there's tons and tons of things you can do with this. And so I wanted to share that. And this is Cyberdeen Warrior. Uh, this is a game that I'm not too familiar with. One I've always wanted to check out. There were so many games on the Commodore 64 back in the day that, you know, I remember going to a buddy's house and flipping through his discs and just choosing a game based on the name and so the built-in menu for the c64 does a good job of kind of introducing you to a game showing you a screenshot and i was excited about checking that out galencia looks to be an aftermarket release based on galaga and looks fantastic i can't wait to play this more as galaga is one of my favorite arcade games classic playing back in the day looks fantastic i can't wait to spend more time and then adding games is super easy you have to have the proper file name but bubble bobble here's bubble bobble and this is i know one of the better games released on the commodore 64 you know have you played this one excellent music and gameplay two player options as well and so you know the c64 seems to be running this excellent i can't wait to play it more also the updated version of ghosts and goblins done by nostalgia this was done in 2015 and added many improvements over the original release. And really excited about playing this more, you know, on the C64. Looks great. You know, this is one of the better arcade conversions and tough as always. But wait, there's more. When you dive into the C64 library, you're going to find tons of aftermarket games such as this, Fix It Felix Jr. You know, the, the Commodore 64 community has done such a wonderful job adding additional games, really pushing the limits of what this classic computer can do. It is a nostalgia powerhouse. So there you have it. 
My initial thoughts, awesome. This has so much potential for hobbyists and enthusiasts of the original Commodore 64. Easy to use, easy to add Commodore 64 games. Later on, I hope to do an additional video on how to properly add VIC-20 games. I just wanted to share some games on the actual unit as well as some homebrew. And so what did you think? What are your favorite Commodore 64 games or memories of the Commodore 64? Have you picked this up? Are you wanting to pick it up? Comment below and as always, thank you for the ongoing support. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the Immortal John Hancock and you have a good day.